Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nikki at the ranch informs Jordan that she must visit the ranch if she desires a face-to-face. -face. In a dive pub, Jordan jokes that she won't fall for such a clear scam. You need to perform better than that. She is positive that the area is brimming with security. She is invited to come see for herself, says Nikki. Jordan responds, perhaps she has already. Perhaps I'm closer than you realize. There's only a security guard out there, Lauren says in a whisper to Nikki as she peers out the window. Nikki sneers at Jordan, telling him that she's probably holed up outside of town, frightened to show her face, and that she's only bluffing. She had to meet with Nikki on her terms if she wants to see her, Nikki says. Nikki is told by Jordan, not when you have nothing to bargain with, that she is not entitled to make the demands. Jordan only has an APB out on her and will eventually go back to prison, Nikki laughs. Jordan declares that he won't return there until her business is resolved. We will come face to face again, she tells Nikki. You won't see me coming, so you'd better keep your eyes open. With a rattled expression, Nikki yells, don't bet on it, and disconnects. Lauren is informed by Nikki about Jordan's desire to meet and about her threat. Lauren believes that before raising a red flag in front of that woman, she ought to have spoken with Victor. Victor, according to Nikki, doesn't want her involved. Lauren proposes they phone Jacka and ask him to bring lunch instead of her going to lunch. If Jordan is closer than they thought, Victor will be relieved that they are staying at home. Nikki says, all right, let's carry that out. Nick asks Victor at Newman if there has been any development with Jordan. Victor intends to lure her out of concealment. It seems to him that she can't help but refer to her as her great niece. Nick is certain that Victoria won't approve of him utilizing Claire. Adam concurs that it looks hazardous. All Victor is requesting is that Claire answer the phone and leave a message for Jordan if he calls. Victoria's approval doesn't matter to him because he's only trying to keep his wife and family safe. Nick presses Victor for details of the plan, but he refuses to talk. What would you like to talk about with me now? Ada reminds his dad that when he promised Sally a design section, he pulled the rug out from under her. He says she needs a push to take her business to the next level and would want him to review the proposal. Are you telling me her little company has already failed? Wonders Victor. She needs as much help as she can get to keep it growing, is not what Adam would say. The numbers aren't bad. They've merely reached a temporary plateau. Victor wonders how much power this woman has on his boys. Sally is more than Adam has ever given her credit for, according to him. He's willing to wager that her company won't fail and that it would be an asset. Victoria tells Cole at the club that she finds it unbelievable that her father would place Claire in such a difficult situation. When Cole finds out that she consented to follow the plan, he fears that another setback would occur. Victoria thinks that maybe she's just venting her guilt. Her father is taking advantage of the fact that he knows she would seize the opportunity to make apologies. Cole is aware that he is defending his family. All he can hope is that he will protect Claire too. Cole is told by Victoria that Victor accepted Claire into the family. This comes as a touching surprise to Cole. Victoria brushes off the possibility that he was attempting to pacify her so that she would comply with his scheme. Cole understands that he will accept Claire for who she is. He believes that getting Jordan back behind bars is crucial and could offer Claire some peace of mind. Perhaps they ought to acknowledge her desire to participate in Victor's scheme. Victoria cautions Claire that she will never forgive her father if this backfires and leads her to suffer a setback. Jack assures Ashley at the Abbott residence that Tucker cannot break her. Given her past, Ashley claims that anyone could have set off this, I'm not doing well, Jack. Jack tells her that she can take on anyone, including her older brother. 
Ashley expresses her gratitude to him for his support, but she must handle this alone. Jack counters and tells her that they will work things out together. Ashley sobs, expressing her fear. She is concerned that perhaps she exaggerated while in Paris. Tucker was pissed off. But what if her brain turned a tipped over glass into a crushed one? I don't know why that would occur. She might find some answers from Jack. Ashley told him she was terrified to death, he reminded her. She only promised Tucker that she wouldn't abandon her family. Who would ask someone to carry out such a task? It is ludicrous. He believes she made the decision to raise the stakes. It was a response to Tucker attempting to control her behavior to fit his expectations of her behavior. She should concentrate on the fact that McCall is unworthy of her, Jack advises her. Ashley believes that the fact that they are no longer married is a victory. When Jack's phone rings, he moves over to answer it. Ashley bolts from the couch, snatches her pocketbook and coat, and goes out the door. Ashley receives a text from Jack in the back of a car, asking her where she went and whether she's okay. Ashley reassures him that she is all right. All she needed was some fresh air and mental space. I'll see you soon at home. After bringing lunch to the ranch, Jack opens Ashley's text message. He queries Lauren about the situation. Lauren claims Nikki had a difficult evening. She was anxious because she wanted to sneak a drink and she wanted to go out to dine. Jack tells Lauren that fumming him was the right decision and feels that she wants to make all of these sensations go away. As Nikki's sponsor, he advises Lauren allow him to have lunch with her alone. Lauren asks whether he's sure he's okay when he checks his phone once again. Although Jack has his own family issues, he assures Nikki that she will have his whole attention. Jack claims he got Nikki her favorites from society, and she joins him. Lauren begs to skip lunch and gives an explanation. Nikki gives her a heartfelt thank you and heads off. Jack expresses his gratitude to Nikki for reaching out to him. Is Victor adjusting to his role as her sponsor, he inquires. Nikki acknowledges that he's probably waiting for an error from him. But we're not going to give him one, right? Jack asks, certain that he is dying for an opportunity to get even with him. Nikki informs him that Lauren believed she desired to have a drink. Jack queries what made her feel uneasy, says Nikki, Jordan. I told her I wasn't afraid of her when I phoned her back because she had been threatening me. Jack, surprised, wants to know what she said. Nikki claims things grew worse. Jack considers Nikki's actions to be reckless. She maintains that's not the case and that it's driving her insane to know the woman is out there. Her final remarks truly affected me. Jack queries her statement. You'll never see me coming, Nikki responds. Victoria expresses gratitude to Cole at the GCAC for his unwavering support and commitment to doing what is right. Cole says he's still a little shaken up on the inside. They talk about how surprised they were to get a daughter they had assumed they would never have. Cole needs to find out just how he can support her. Victoria remarks that it's still quite amazing. Cole is incredibly upset that they were unable to raise her and show her the compassion and affection she so richly deserves. Victoria concurs, she is heartbroken. They were missled and conned. Cole is told by Victoria that he would have made the greatest parent ever. She remembers how, realizing she needed him, he left everything to fly to Oregon. She will always remember it. Victor at Newman wants to know if Adam plans to manage Sally's section on his own. Adam says, she has a much better handle on her business than I ever could, Therefore, he doesn't think she needs that. Why does she need Newman then? Wonders Victor. Isn't that what business is all about? Asks Adam, referring to the importance of a healthy return on their investment. Victor requests to talk to Nick by himself. Adam is happy that his father did not simply brush the concept under the rug. After he leaves, Victor asks Nick's opinion. He has moved on and would like to see Sally prosper. This seems like smart business to me. If not, I never would have made the initial investment in her company. 
Additionally, he believes it will maintain Adam's happiness and good behavior. They're all benefiting from it. It's win slash win. Adam messages Sally in the hallway outside the office, asking her to clear her schedule for tonight. He wants to take her out to dinner and could even have a surprise in store for her. Nick calls him back into the office, poking his head out. Victor informs Adam that while he comprehends his concept and why Nick would approve of it, he will never again collaborate professionally with Sally Spectra. Victor leaves, saying he has a meeting. Nick tells Adam that while he supported his proposal, it was unlikely to succeed. Adam is not going to give up. Seemingly, his father is putting him to the test to determine how much he wants it. If I were you, I wouldn't push dad on this, Nick remarks. Well, good thing you're not me, smiles Adam. Ashley checks a text from Tracy, inquiring where she is and informing her that she is at home if she would want to talk while she is in the rear of her car. Ashley doesn't respond. Abruptly, the vehicle is struck from the rear. Ashley experiences a flashback of the vehicle accident she was in while pregnant, decades ago. At the ranch, Jack gives Nikki the reassurance that Jordan won't be able to reach her before Victor's security team notices her approach. Victor's unwavering commitment to safeguarding his family has always impressed him. You could not be in safer hands. Jack cautions that Jordan can easily become close to Nikki if she starts to overindulge in alcohol. Nikki is aware of his accuracy. Jack recognizes her want to drink, but that's just Jordan waiting for an opportunity. Nikki promises to be more resilient this time. My life might depend on it this time. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.